So are there infinite genders? And why is there a move in our culture today to move beyond the issue of male and female and to say that there are infinite genders and ultimately is up to the individual? Well, certainly, if you've been paying attention at all, the issue of gender is a divisive topic in our day and time. And here in this video, I want to tell you the one question that you've got to answer if you want to decide what it is that you believe about the issue of gender. Well, on a recent episode of the Dr. Phil Show, conservative commentator Matt Walsh was on a panel of people who were debating the issue of gender. Are there two genders? Are there infinite genders? And he asked the fellow panelist the question of what is a woman? The other panelists on that show said that was not a question that they could answer. They said it's one of them actually said it's an umbrella term and it's up to the individual to define that. And I think there's a great book that explains how our culture has moved beyond male and female. And it is Carl Truman's book, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. Subtitle of this book is Cultural Amnesia, Expressive Individualism and the Road to Sexual Revolution. And here in this book, Truman documents over, over hundreds of years how we've arrived to this place where we're talking about the idea of transgenderism and infinite genders. And there's a great description of this book. Now, I'll link to this book in the description of this video, but here's what the description of this book says. Carl Truman carefully analyzes the roots and development of the sexual revolution as a symptom rather than the cause of the human search for identity. This timely exploration of the history of thought behind the sexual revolution teaches readers about the past, brings clarity to the present, and gives guidance for the future as Christians navigate the culture's ever-changing search for identity. So what are some of the distinctions that Truman says is unique about our time? Well, for one thing, he says there's a difference between how we handle sex and sexuality. So for example, he says this, while sex may be presented today as a little more than a recreational activity, sexuality is presented as that which lies at the very heart of what it means to be an authentic person. And so we see in our culture, people desire the freedom to explore their sexuality and to express. And anything that would put boundaries around that expression is often seen as a bad thing, something that needs to be removed. We want full freedom when it comes to exploring our sexuality. So for example, Truman talks about gender. He says, why does the sentence, I'm a woman trapped in a man's body, make sense not simply to those who have sat in post-constructualist and queer theory seminars, to put my neighbors, to people I pass on the street, to co-workers who have no particular political axe to grind, and who are blissfully unaware of the reparative jargon and arcane concepts of Michael Foucault and his myriad epigones and incomprehensible imitators. The statement is, after all, emblematic of a view of personhood that is almost completely dispensed with the idea of authority beyond that of personal psychological conviction. An oddly Cartesian notion. I think I am a woman, therefore I am. How did such a strange idea become the common orthodox currency of our culture? So that's the question he's answering. How did we get to this place where we're saying these things that, you know, 20, 30 years ago would have been extremely unique and small perspectives? And I believe the answer to this question, as Truman eventually gets to, is the answer of who has authority. That is the fundamental question that we must answer if we wanted to determine what do we believe about uh, gender. Is there male and female or is there beyond? Historically, God was the one who was given authority to define who male and we are as male and female. In fact, Genesis 1.27 is a very popular verse that is quoted for this concept that for thousands of years has been used to talk about who we are as people. Genesis 1.27 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. But certainly, what have we done in our day to replace God as authority? As we've taken him off the, the throne and we've, we've tried to remove him from society, who has replaced God as having authority to determine who we are? It is the individual. We have given that authority to the individual. If the individual has authority, then there must be infinite genders. And that's the reason that on the Dr. Phil show, those panelists could not answer the question of what is a woman because they said it's not for me to answer. It is for each and every individualism. So when it comes to what you believe about the issue of gender, the question for you and I is simply not, are there more than two genders? But the question is, who has the authority ultimately to say? And this may be frustrating for a lot of Christians. We may find ourselves discouraged by our cultural current cultural moment. But I really like what Truman said about that as well. He said the task of the Christian is not to whine about the moment in which he or she lives, but to understand its problems and respond appropriately to them. Well, let me know what you think in the comments section. How do you answer that question? Who has the authority to determine who we are as 
men and women, or are there ultimately infinite genders? Maybe you caught that Dr. Phil episode, kind of went viral a little bit over the last few weeks. This is Jason for Soulfire. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.